Hey, it's the Virtual Comedy Show. We're starting. If you've ever seen this show, you know it's usually a confusing mess. But tonight, <laughs> it's going to be even more so because our Fred, Bra our friend Brad Tassel, who usually does these opening remarks, he is overbooked to the walls tonight. So he'll hopefully be joining us in about 30 minutes. So filling in for him to do our cold open is our friend Marshall Stern. There's Marshall Stern. But before you do it, Marshall, hang on a second. Just yeah. to add the confusion. Marshall Stern is doing our cold open. Later, Steve Marshall will be our headliner and I'm <laughs> Steve Goody. So if you can keep that straight, you're smarter than we are. So now, Marshall, if you would take it away with a cold opening joke, please. Here we go. All right. Kevin Bacon star of Footloose, said he won't eat pig anymore. He rushed to turn off the stove just as the poached piggy was within six degrees of becoming Kevin's bacon. Uh, <laughs> since 2020, we've done plenty of virtual comedy shows online. And though the virus is slowing, we'll keep going because we've still got lots of hydroxychloroquine. And Ivermectin. Welcome to Virtual Comedy Show. It's a Zoom meeting with jokes. Phone. So please turn on your talking, camera, please turn on your mic, yourself. unless you have barking dogs or a rabid moose in your living room, in which case, please mute yourself for Pete's sake. And let's have some fun. It's the Virtual Comedy Show, starring Steve Goody and Brad Tassel. Tonight, Steve and Brad welcome comedian Steve Marshall, plus funny songs from Aubrey and a patty melt from Patty Vasquez, and much, much more. Now, please welcome Steve Goody. Because I didn't have time to redo that. <laughs> so that's the best we can do. And we're going to say goodbye. Uh, you did a great job, Marshall. Thank you very much. I'm going to replace you now. Hi, everybody. So everything's going to be in a different order tonight. It's going to be insane. We're going to start tonight with the top 10 list. And before we can't I can figure that, out why it's not coming out the TV sound. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, would, <laughs> come on, you guys. You've done Zoom before. Rob, I'm going to mute you guys because you are talking to each other. You can do better than this, Rob and Linda. Okay. When you're ready to be quiet, join us and unmute yourself. Meanwhile, we're going to try and do this uh, top 10 list. Um, before we do the top 10, we got some viewer mail. It's very exciting. Occasionally, we get viewer mail. And tonight is one of those nights. So uh, here's the letter. Mail. Who's saying things? Good fan mail. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it says, Dear Stephen Brad, <laughs> remember that time you went to Scotland? You mentioned that they tried to make you eat haggis. And you told us that haggis has something to do with a sheep's stomach. But you never really told us what haggis is. So what is it? Your friend, Jason Fontainebleau, uh, Conway, West Virginia. Well, thank you for writing in, Jason. That's an excellent question. So Such a good question. I decided we'd make a whole top ten list of it. So tonight's category <laughs> is going to be uh, top ten ingredients in a serving of haggis. <laughs> oh, gross. Yeah. And, and I've been told by the FCC and the FDA that if I'm going to do a uh, top ten list about food, that we have to preface it with this. Uh, what do we call this? It's a warning. Okay, there it is. Hey, this is gonna get pretty close. That's what I was supposed to do. And now, let's do the top ten thing, which goes like... <laughs> Remember how I promised you this show is gonna be all screwed up? Yeah. I was not lying. Promise kept. Promise right. kept. <laughs> Let's get going. Top 10 ingredients in a serving of haggis. Number 10. One quart of sadness. <laughs> Number 9. Half a cup of pencil sharpener shavings. <laughs> you prefer number 2 if at all possible. Number 8. Three pints expired yogurt. <laughs> number 7. One, one pound time. shredded cadaver. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, by the way, these are going to get more gross as we go. So if this is a problem for you, you might want to just go la, la, la for about 30 seconds. Number six, 36 packets condemned KFC artificial sweetener. <laughs> okay. That's what gives the haggis its tang. Oh, man. Number five, 12 sautéed parakeet beaks. Ooh. <laughs> from Iraq, if possible. Number four, six diced King Cross urinal cakes. Ooh. 
They have to be diced. You can't just put them in the food processor. You have to, if you do, either do it right or don't do it. I say with a haggis. Number three. One United Airlines air sickness bag used. Oh. 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 Top 10 ingredients in a serving of haggis. Number two. A quarter teaspoon of Rudy Giuliani hair dye, a.k.a. Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I was going to provide a picture, and then I decided, nah. Yeah, I and the number one ingredient in a serving of haggis, a pinch of Ted Cruz's beard. <laughs> I'm grossing myself out now. All right. Good. Enough of that. It is time to bring in our headliner because we're going straight to the headliner tonight. Please welcome uh, to add the spotlight with me. It's our friend Steve Marshall. Hi, Steve Marshall. Hello. Hi, Steve. Hey, hey Steve Goody. How I'm going to skip a thing here. I'm fine, thank you, and thank you for joining us. Give me one second here while I do something. Okay. I don't know why we can't get this. Huh? I was just skipping a thing Hello. so that I can get to your skipping intro. Skipping a thing. I'm skipping a thing. Okay. You're in Japan, are you not? I am. I am not. Yes, I am. I, you are. Yes, I am in so Japan. <laughs> So while it's Monday the 13th for us, it's Tuesday the 14th for you. It's Tuesday the 14th, just after high noon. And when, when Brad asked me if it was noon, to be honest, I said, yes, it's high noon in Japan, but I promise not to be high, but I will be in the far out future, baby. So there you go. He said to use that joke. And anyway, and he was I didn't. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, imagine this out. Hey, look good. I know how exactly. it works right here. All right, so here's what we're going to do, Steve. We're gonna, I'm going to run a little intro for you. Then you're going to give us okay. 10 minutes of hilarious magic. And then okay. after you're done with 10 minutes of that, then we'll chat. I got some more magic. Time. Yeah, you do. Here we go. <laughs> it's time for a big headliner. Got some funny, funny jokes to say. Oh, do a 10 minute set headliner. Man, I'm so glad that it's Monday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Steve Marshall. <laughs> Hey, everybody, I'm Steve. I am in Japan right now. And I just want to say this is the first one of these virtual shows that I've done since I had to do the virtual shows. And it's a much better feeling doing the virtual show now and knowing that I have an actual live gig to go to next week. So I'm very much in a better mood right now. I'm just saying. So one of the nice things about doing this stuff from my house, though, that I really liked during when I had to do it was I could show you things that I wouldn't necessarily take on the road with me. Now, I started doing magic when I was eight years old. I got a magic kit for Christmas. I was a, a shy, overweight kid. And it was the thing that I wanted to kind of break me out of my shell, and it worked. And this is one of the things I get to show. This is the exact box that I opened on Christmas morning when I was eight years old. And um, this is called the, it was the TV magic kit. And this guy's name, <laughs> to add to the confusion today, this man's name is Marshall Brodine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Lord. I it just sounds like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so he would say, it's easy once you know the secret. Well, that was really a lie because it wasn't that easy. But the first trick that I ever gravitated to when I opened that box was a trick that I've, it's a superstition of mine that I open all my shows with this. Uh, it's the cut and restored rope trick. Now, what happened was I was eight years old. I had read the instructions on the kit and I came out in my living room, my mom, my dad, my sister, or my audience. And I came out, I dug out this piece of rope and I did what the instructions said. I had read it. So I, I tied it into a knot. It then said, take out your magic rope cutting scissors. <laughs> I was eight. I was eight. That's all they trusted me with. <laughs> and cut the rope right there. The instruction said when you cut the rope that you would have two pieces of rope exactly the same length. And, and this is true. This part of my stories are true. And this is exactly what happened when I was eight years old. So I did, I did what any self-respecting eight-year-old magician would do at that point. I ran out of the room crying. <laughs> and uh, ser no, seriously, my dad came in. He said, Stephen, it's okay. This is when you can show people what an optical illusion is. Now, I'm going to teach you this. You can do this at home. This part may or may not be true. So anyway, you take two pieces of rope, string, an old tie you don't like. Just cut it in two pieces. So one short, one long. And if you move your hands together and apart at just the right speed, it will give the illusion, just the illusion, that both pieces are the exact same length. Watch this. You ready? Here we go. You see it? Wow. <laughs> wow. There'd be a delay in the Zoom. I know it looks great from this side. No, anyway, I got to move my hands just a little faster. The more you get that bottom rope to jump and jiggle, the more it starts to look. It's just an illusion, though. It looks just like <laughs> it's in a weird illusion. Isn't that a weird optical illusion that both ropes are the same length? It's really, that's just an illusion. That's reality. 
Yeah. Both ropes are now the wow. same length. Yeah. But I, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Steve, because that's my name. You're thinking, Steve, can you start from the beginning? Well, yes, Ooh. I can. It's the magic rope trick. Now, I can't tell you how this works, but if you ever get a magic kit and you want to learn how to do it, I can give you a couple of things to watch out for when you're practicing. A couple of tips. Tip number one, a lot of people, when they're tying that first knot in the rope, they pause at this point. You don't want to do that. They get nervous. Never pause because if you pause too long, like I have just now, you run a slight, just a very slight risk, though, of the ends popping off. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. If that happens, you're left with this Ooh. long loop of rope with no ends, and it makes the trick almost impossible to do. <laughs> I say almost because all you got to do is act with confidence. Give them a little squeeze. Blow right there. And the ends will pop right back on. Uh, and you can oh. do the magic rope trick. Now, tip number two. If you go to a magic shop in the United States or anywhere in the world, there's magic shops all over the place. They'll try to sell you fake rope. Don't buy it. You want the regular rope. How do you know it's regular rope? Two ends, one middle. Two ends. I know that sounds obvious. But <laughs> if you go to a magic shop, they'll try to sell you fake rope. And fake rope has three ends and one middle. <laughs> you do not want that. You don't want that. If you don't want that, you don't want the super fake rope that has four ends in one middle. You don't want that. Yep. What do you want, kids? You want regular rope that has what? Two ends in one middle. And you're all set to do the magic rope trick. Now, I've been practicing. I know now. Don't pause. Tie that first knot. I'm, I've gotten older. They let me use a magic knife now. Magic rope cutting knife. <laughs> That's still all they trust me with. <laughs> Cut it right there. And now you have two pieces of rope exactly the same length. Now, this is the fun part because even where you're at right now, it's the audience participation part. I'm going to tie it into a knot. Everybody count with me to three. You ready? One, two, three. three. <laughs> and that's the first trick I ever learned. Thank you. That was my first trick ever. That was really, that was really the first trick. That's serious. Yeah. Now, I... Real quick, I know I know that the holiday season is coming up. You're going to have parties and stuff like that. So I'm going to teach you a little thing. It's a, a tr trick you can do at a party. Uh, this is what's known not as a magic trick, but as a bar bet. I can't make that thing go away. What's that? Uh, it's Rob. <laughs> Carry on. Sorry about that, Steve. <laughs> I'm like, I, I thought I'd done something really amazing. No, you're, I you're... can't make that thing go away. I'm like, going, wow, I made something up here. This is great. I'm better than I thought I was. <laughs> so this is this is just the thing. It's a bar bet. And, and, and I'm not saying you can win free drinks with this, but you can win free drinks with this. Ooh. So you, the bet is you put a piece of rope or, like I said, a string, an old tie. You just lay it down, not in any particular way. And the, the bet is you, you wager a person that they have to pick up both ends of the rope and without letting go, once they've picked up both ends, they cannot let go. And without letting go of the two ends, they have to tie a knot in the middle of the rope. And it can be done. So usually people will pick it up and they'll start doing this. And it looks like one of those puzzle things. And it never, people, Ooh. everybody wants to try it, especially if they've had a couple of drinks and won't try it. Now, if they get lucky, this will happen. And they'll tie a slip knot. But just tell them to pull it tight and it'll come right out. So mm -hmm. it's impossible to do. When everybody's given up, you show them how to do it. And make sure they're far away so they don't hit you when you show them. <laughs> All you have to do is pick up both ends. Once you've picked them up however you want, you can't let go. and You have to tie a knot. You don't say how you pick them up. This is the way you pick them up. One here. Mm -hmm. One here. I picked up both ends. I don't let go. <laughs> and I can tie a knot in the middle of the rope. Yeah. And the rope disappears. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next the next portion of my show is actually brought to you by, and this is serious, I bought this in Japan. It's a Japanese coffee that when I saw it, I think it's, it's a coffee that it works the opposite of regular coffee. Um, if you wake up in the morning feeling too good, you can bring, drink this coffee to actually bring you down. This is a real coffee in Japan, and it's called Depresso. <laughs> <laughs> no idea who came up with that name, but that's Depresso coffee from Japan. Yeah. So, so the other, the last trick I want to do, um, 
it's actually since I'm in Japan now, and I've been living. I've actually been living here. I came over here to work for Disney. Uh, Tokyo Disneyland called me, um, and I came over here to work. I was supposed to be here for six months when they hired me for, and I actually got extended a little bit. And for as of this now, I've been here for seven, eight, nine, twenty-five years. Wow. I've been living here. <laughs> yeah. So I've been. This is my. I'm in my house in Japan, just outside of Tokyo. But I figured since I'm living here, I needed to figure out some kind of Japanese magic. And I actually heard a story about this guy who had moved to America from Japan. And I'm possibly the only magician in the world that actually does a magic trick with sushi. <laughs> so I have three pieces of sushi. And this is a, a traditional Japanese rice bowl and some chopsticks, which will be my magic wand for today. And the story is about a guy um, named, named Bando-san. And Bando-san moved to the United States. And when a person moves to the States, they're usually, or anywhere in the world, they usually give them a nickname that's easier for them to remember and pronounce. So Bando's name was shortened to Ben by the American people he was working with, but they liked the honorific of San, so they called him Ben-san. And so Ben-san had this little sushi bowl and he would bring three pieces of sushi to work every day. And nobody could understand how he got filled up with three pieces of sushi. He said, well, it's because this is a magic sushi bowl. And he says, I take my chopsticks, I put a little bit of shoyu or soy sauce in the bottom, and I dip a piece of the sushi in here. Now, if you've never eaten sushi before, you have to remember, dip the fish in the soy sauce, not the rice, because it'll disintegrate. So he dips it in, he says, I place it in my hand, I take out my magic chopsticks, it disappears, and then the sushi will reappear inside the bowl. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, hold on a second. If something just came up on my screen. I'm sorry. Something does. Yeah. Oh, it's Somebody telling me that the live stream. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. So, so um, he said that sometimes it doesn't reappear in the bowl, but it appears over here in my pocket. Ooh. And then he gave me a piece of advice and he said, never keep sushi in your pocket more than three days. <laughs> <laughs> just, tr just trust me on that one. All right. He said, I placed it in the bowl, I waved my magic. Sushi sticks and it reappears over here. There's one. He says, I can do this all day long. It's like a never ending supply of sushi. It just keeps reappearing in. And that's how I can get full all day long on just three pieces of sushi. Well, then he play a little game. He'd put two pieces inside the bowl, place one in his hand and say, see, it always jumps back just like that. Then he would get really happy with the sushi. He'd place sushi in his pocket, all three pieces. Remember, no more than three days. No more than three days. <laughs> he tapped the bowl, and the one piece of sushi would reappear back inside of his magic sushi bowl. Well, then he placed the last piece in his pocket, and he'd impart some wisdom. He'd say, you know, I'm originally from Japan. I've been living in America for a long time. I, I miss my sushi. I like sushi for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But you know, since I've been living here, there's sometimes <laughs> when I just feel like the cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. That's Thank impressive. you, Steve Thank Marshall. you. Wow. Ooh, that was great. Man. Okay. How long can you keep a cheeseburger in your pocket? Are there rules about that? 20 seconds. Uh, Four days. This one, this this Japanese cheeseburger, I think will last at least a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Look, everybody, it's Brad Tassel. We to see the end of that, everybody. Fantastic. And, and the yeah, end of my yeah, I, I the I went live to Facebook. Wait, thanks. For some reason, when I push the button, it works. I don't know why. But uh, but uh, Brad, nice to see you, Steve. Yeah, good to see you. Steve Marshall. Uh, which one? Which one? <laughs> you, 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 you. So uh, yeah. great to have you here, and it looks like you're a big hit. Thanks for inviting well, thank me. So much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Do we have to go to Japan to see you live, or are you ever going to play the states in the near future? Um, actually, you know what? I I wrote a musical about kids who do magic, and it debuted last um, last January in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it opens in Orlando, Florida at the Orlando family stage, it'll run the entire month of March in Orlando, Florida. And it's wow. called Ali Kazan and the Magic Mansion. Let's go, everybody. Yes, 12 original trip, songs, trip. everything, yeah. 
Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Steve Marshall. We appreciate you being here. You're being welcome. Magical. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much, Steve. Uh, Julia, you can be proud and look, of your dad. Awesome. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to try and bring Patty in because she's supposed to be the next thing, but uh, she's not got her camera on, so I can't add her. Hey, Patty, Patty turn on the camera so I can add you. Patty. It's so dark where I am. You can't. It's so dark. <laughs> You're somewhere else. How can you find her? Hold on. He's a moving target yeah. is a problem. Okay, here we go. How's yeah. that? I got her. There she is. It's Patty Vasquez. Hey, Betty. Oh, wow. It is dark. He's driving it Hello. home. The hat helps. Oh, How's that? Wait, hold on. No, that's, I can't. That helped? There you go. Pretty good. I'm like, I'm like out of the darkness. That's creepy. All right. Okay. Yeah. It's almost All as right. good as the connection from Japan. So I think we're fine. Okay. Let's do a thing. You ready? Thing. Here we go. It's time for a Patty Melt. With Patty Vasquez, Patty Vasquez. From global conflicts to greenhouse gases. The folks refusing to wear masks says. The politicians getting caught grabbing ass says. She's melting down. It's a Patty Vasquez. Patty Melt. It's dark in her car. Hey, wait a minute. Where's Steve? Where am I? Yeah. Oh, hey, is that better? There, there we go. Okay. It wouldn't let me take me out. There we okay, go. Fine. <laughs> Patty. Take you out. There we go. I got a better light this way. Here. Okay. This is going to be tough because I just came from. Okay. I'm in Los Angeles. First thing. <laughs> and I have to tell you, Los Angeles smells like hamburgers, Chinese food, and pot, which <laughs> is a very conflicting <laughs> sensation. Because if you have the pot, all you want to do is eat the Chinese food and the hamburgers. And now that I just saw sushi, I really want some sushi. And I haven't even. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I just threw out my uh, my hostess. She took me to a yoga class, and I was like, you have to get out of the car. I can't have you sitting next to me while I do this. So she's <laughs> going inside to try to find the show. I told her virtualcomedyshow.com because it reminded me of the early days of doing these shows with you guys, and my mom would come down to the basement and just stand, like, right next to me. <laughs> What's going on? So my friend Yenny uh, took me to see to go to, to do yoga class, which is called a sound bath. They bathe you in sounds with a gong and a bowl with a ding and all this stuff. And it's it's very it's all in the dark and you keep your eyes closed and you do deep breathing. And the kind of breathing where you they tell you to inhale slowly and they're like, and when you get to the peak of your breath, take another breath, which is very confusing because I'm like, I did the last one. Where else is the other one coming from? I don't know. And what I'm telling you is uh, when people tell me to relax or do these kinds of things, the more stressed I get. I have the most ridiculous heightened sense of awareness the more I try to relax and decompress. For example, during this class, we're doing this deep breathing, we're relaxing, we're stretching. It's all in the dark. It's not like your big, you know, warrior pose, downward facing dog, smell your feet kind of thing. It was just a uh, very slow movement. And there's a guy in the class who has the wettest, most hacking cough. So we're all doing, and you hear like this, like just chunky, you know, the kind of cough where you're breathing, you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm absolutely bathed in his mucus i can't relax <laughs> that's what i'm saying it wasn't a sound bath it was more of a bath. so i uh, I'm, I'm trying to relax it's been a very stressful uh two months uh, i'm I, I was telling yenny about this comedy show and i, I i'm so glad I'm, i can still do this because i don't know about you guys but i am freaking about 20 i'm freaking out about 2024 so here's my mouth i'm sorry but over the weekend the former president of the united states called okay first of all i know if he doesn't say me i shouldn't take it as me i'm not a marxist <laughs> i'm not a communist and i'm not a fascist but they don't know that they all the right-wing cultists all believe that if you support uh Medicare for all and having education and like really education, like learning the truth about our past, that if we believe in uh, re taxing the wealthy, that we're communists. We're not. And we're not vermin. And that's the kind of language that is, was mm -hmm. used by Mussolini and Hitler. And I'm not exactly. here for it. So you guys, I don't care. I, I, I know. Look, I get it. I get that people don't agree with some of the things that Biden is doing. And you want to talk about how he's older. You know what? Situational wisdom. That's what I'm telling you right now. Situational wisdom. Uh, Biden is my horse, and I'm riding him to the end. And I don't care if he falls down where I'm. He's my horse. Get on this horse, or you're under this horse. That's all I'm saying. All right, that's my mouth. The yoga does me good. <laughs> you know, right. Patty. Patty. You know, Patty. You could just have your friend hold the camera. 
<laughs> no, I don't want her to watch me while I'm doing this because I don't okay. know if I'm going to slip and say something about her. Like, yo, nah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay if she's, in, she's in here. I sent her aside. She lives at, at the top of that hill right there. Isn't that pretty? Oh, wow. um, that so it's Yenny Alvarez. Yes, Yenny Alvarez and Mark DiCarlo. You may know Mark DiCarlo, who does the voice of Jimmy Neutron's dad. Yeah. And Yenny does all the voices in Spanish, like at Disney World. And you, you hear her voice everywhere, uh, whether it's in English or in Spanish. So I'm very lucky uh, to be rich, here. Rich, rich people. <laughs> why why are you in LA? Um ish. Um I was I was moderating an international film festival panel over the weekend uh, for social change. So it's an organization that uh that uplifts people from all different whether it's immigrants or people who've been incarcerated. Uh they do a lot of work with climate change. So I was moderating the panel on um uh, on the our our criminal justice system and prisons. So that wow, was, moderating. Was, you know, very very cheerful stuff. That's yeah, very, so well, that's, that's very heady and important. I just did a show where we used master date as a word. So that's <laughs> meaningless. Kid up, full I love it. Art, fun, fun. Keep not it at classy. Fun. Yes, classy. Yes. Classy. Okay. Well, right. that was thank it. you, Patty. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I love you. Worried. I'll be here. I'm just, I'm going to, I got to charge my phone. Okay. There you go. Bye. Awesome. Hey, right. oh boy. Speaking of charge, I'm very excited. We have Auburn tonight. Yay! Oh, Auburn! Yay! Oh, I missed him. Yay! He's hard to get. I tried to get Auburn for Halloween because she's got all kinds of spooky songs, but she was not available. This is the closest to Halloween we could get. So it's still Halloween, and, according to me. And, and she's also a lot younger than you, so stop trying to get Auburn. I think that's, uh... <laughs> Funny, my partner's feet. name is Steve, too. Yeah, I know. Oh, hey, look at that. Uh, so there could be some confusion. It's not necessarily my fault. <laughs> That's true. I, I agree. Also, Steve, I can't take us out for some reason. So I love that this got weird immediately. All right, I'm taking you out. Really, what I got here. So, all right, well, go ahead and do the thing. Hi, Auburn. We're gonna Hello. do a little intro for you. You know how it works. And then you're gonna yep. play a song. I have no idea what you're gonna play. Then I've got to answer it musically somehow. Then you'll play another song. So that'll be exciting. Here. Ooh. Wait. Where's my thing? My thing went away. All right, I'm gonna try and wow, do it. <laughs> it's our musical guest, our musical guest. He's gonna sing something funny and then Steve will play something in between. Our musical guest, our musical guest. It's time for our musical guest. Yeah, I'm hoping people who are sneezing and making other sounds will stop doing that during our musical <laughs> guest. That's you. So I do this thing sometimes um, where I roll dice and I have a spreadsheet that has a bunch of different things. And I, I basically um, refer to the spreadsheet and the dice to uh, tell me what has to be in a song. And this was one, um, this one was, uh, had to be about ataxophobia, which is the fear of disorder or tidiness. Mm -hmm. It had to um, be acapella, which I will not do today. I'm gonna play with a guitar. And it had to have penny whistle, and I had to make it a shanty, and I had to make it gay. <laughs> so a gay sea shanty about a fear of disorder or untidiness. <laughs> so uh, here goes. I should have went on camera for a little bit. a gay pirate named Tess who loved her gorgeous wife Bess but one thing she despised more than cheating or lies was the way that her wife left a mess mm -hmm. yo ho and a bottle of rum Tess couldn't rest till the cleaning was done from sea biscuit weevils to dust bunnies evils she feared they would rise through the scum Never best went to a new room. Tess would walk right beside behind her with a broom. For seeing the dust, Tess fervently cussed, convinced dust bunnies would be their doom. Yo ho and a bottle of rum. Tess couldn't rest till the cleaning was done. From sea biscuit weevils to buck dust bunnies evils, she feared they would rise through the scum. From sea biscuit weevils to dust bunnies evils, she feared they would rise through the scum. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh man, you're done too yeah. soon. I wanted yeah. more of the dust bunnies in the evil and the evil one. More well, so the the whole the whole thing that I that I came up with, I'm like, I well, I need her to re, uh, to have a reason of being afraid of disorder and untidiness, and so we came up with this concept that there were monsters uh, in like the mm. like the dust bunnies were actual monsters and such. I, I made a video weird. on TikTok, and um, <laughs> it, I had like a giant bug go across the screen chasing her. It was pretty fun. Wow. <laughs> well, nice. I have no choice. Which, which song I will answer that with. Not only is it a pirate song, it's also in the same time signature. Ah. That's what you just did. Nice. And it fits Halloween, too, because when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a pirate when I was a kid. Nice. But I, I had every disease known to humankind when I was a kid. Could not even pretend to be a pirate. Couldn't play pirate with my friends. I was too sickly. So I, all I could do is dream that someday I could become a pirate. Like, you can see how that worked out. <laughs> when I was a young man, I set out to see a swashbuckling pirate. I aspired to be, I was bold, I was eager, I was stalwart and stout. But they no sooner put out from port than I threw my back out. It's the world's only hypochondriac pirate song, and for some reason I sing it like Jerry Lewis. Oh, the first day he offered assistance to me. Though no chiropractor he turned out to be. On that ship I could find no relief for my back. Cause it turned out nobody the Advil remembered to pack. <laughs> Singing yo-ho, maybe I was mistaken. This is a voyage I shouldn't have taken. Apparently a life on the sea is no place for someone as chronically fragile as me. I'm gonna skip ahead to where the other pirates throw me off the boat cause they're sick of me. But I don't die. I escaped just in time, I am pleased to report. Though my plank walking fate, I did barely aboard. I washed out as a pirate upon the high sea. <laughs> wow. And I quit smoking. So now I can find all my pirating to MP3. Singing yo ho, I got such a flogging. When Taylor Swift, I was caught cataloging. Apparently, a life on the sea is no place for someone who's quite as consistently, brutally, desperately, clinically, utterly, truly, pathetically, late, obsessive, compulsive, neurotically, totally, hopelessly, chronically fragile as me. <laughs> now I'm gonna take a nap. One more from Abraham. I'm gonna keep it on the sea theme here. Hey, yeah. hey, pirates! Mm -hmm. uh, this one is from the perspective of a kraken who fell in love with a ship. <laughs> Man, I wish I could have followed that one. I've got the perfect song for that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this one needs reverb. Yes. <laughs> What are you doing here, you lonely thing, lost in a cold sea air? I wouldn't want you to sink, 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 with your stern so fair. What a fine-looking figurehead you hold so close to your breast. Does she protect you when the sea goes red? From your clutches can she be rest? I will hold you in my many arms. Oh, my love is true. Come with me, my darling. For me, there is only you. If I come closer, will you turn from me and leave me wondering why? You're not the first to turn around and leave, but I'm weary of goodbyes. And I will hold you in my many arms, oh, my love is true. Come with me, my darling. For me, there 
Wow, man. Nice. Man, nice. How, do, how do I know people this cool? Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> you're way too classy for this show. Yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? I have to think about your choices. We really have a guest. We really have a guest so good that we chide them for being yeah, on this got, show. You're real, young lady, you need to rethink your choices in life. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to get in at the, the, the bluebird, you know. <laughs> this ain't the bluebird. <laughs> you can't get time and time bluebird again. works there. The closest thing to a bluebird we have here is you. You, yeah. <laughs> and I'm purple, you know. That's true, but there's some blue the in there somewhere. Bear. There's a blue, man. That was wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Where can we hear you playing live in the upcoming little while? Actually, um, I am playing the 100 Taylor Arts Market in Nashville and Green, uh, Green, Green Hills. Green Hill? No, Germantown. Nope. Germantown starts with a G. Germantown. Oh, that's not green at all. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. They both Germantown, start with G. Uh, on Saturday. The Saturday oh, oh, at you know what? I think I can make that. No, I can't. I will be in Ohio. I oh. can't do that. Well. Will you be doing it the next Saturday? No. <laughs> it's a once a month thing at that uh, arts market that they host it. Okay. But, Is it an indoors um, thing? I hope because it's getting cold. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. All right. Okay, well, there you go. Yep. Thank you. I also broadcast online all the time. On Wednesday, I have a, a guest on my online show at 7 p.m. Oh. Central on Wednesday. Wait, say all that again. I'm going to put you back. What on. online say show? Again? Yes, I have a weekly web concert that I do every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central time uh, with a guest, and we play all original music and uh, all that kind of stuff. Wow. I've been doing it for 11 years now. Mm -hmm. I should do that oh. sometime. Yeah, you've done it a few times. Oh, I have. That's have right. Back. I should do it again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. I should right. write a song. I've right. written a lot of really, really filthy songs lately. Maybe this would be the place to showcase. <laughs> <laughs> Next week is open currently, so. Yeah. You have a beautiful voice. <laughs> Thank yeah, you so right. much. Thank you. Yeah, you really do. That was Too good. good for this show. Too good for this show. Hey, do I get an intro? <laughs> yes. I'm glad you asked, Brad. You brought up an interesting point. This is the... this. Brad is going to do his monologue now, as opposed to earlier in the show. Ordinarily, when we do the show, he does it right after the opening credits. So there's no need for an intro. But tonight's different. And I didn't have time because I only found out about this 10 hours ago. Me so too. Me too. I'm using, I'm using an intro that I made for something we never actually did. I was going to do a karaoke, complicated karaoke bit, and we never actually used it. So this will be your intro. Here we go. The virtual comedy show needs karaoke, but lip syncs, so it's virtually. Now the virtual comedy show will get just what it needs. Steve's kooky, crazy, off book three songs in a row with way too many words for one person to possibly memorize. Karaoke. Yeah. AKA Brad Tassel. Wow. Yeah, there you go, everybody. It makes me feel like I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Hi. Hello, friends. And I'm here and welcome to the last half of the show monologue. Uh, first of all, Thank you, Marshall and Steve and Steve and Marshall and all the Marshalls and Steve we have on the show. <laughs> and Auburn and everybody. I am now with Marshall. My last name is Stevens, so. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, these guys all got married. You know, Marshall, Steve, Steve, Marshall, Marshall. So anyway, uh, I'm on the celebrity silhouette uh, with uh, them. It's so named because we drive in the shadows of other ships and make them look fat. <laughs> 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 I, I wrote that right now. That's great. Hey, the reason I'm late for this show, by the way, is something that will surprise everyone and surprised me. It seems that I'm funny. 
uh, who the hell did that? Huh? <laughs> so I did my regular show yesterday and messed up by getting a lot of laughs. So as, as she said, 10 hours ago, I got an email this morning, 10 hours ago that said, congratulations on your show. It was so good. You have to come tonight and do a show for free. <laughs> Not an honor. Hence the weird nature of this show tonight. But of course, with Stephen Patty and everybody with a little help uh, from a little help from our generation's Maury Amsterdam. Ladies <laughs> and yo, the jokester. It all worked out. So speaking of last night's show, uh, my show, uh, we were worried at first uh, it, w- it wasn't going to be a success. Not because I'm not funny, but because of the cruise problem that you offend old white dudes and old white ladies and they complain. Matter of fact, there was a dude sitting right behind my wife and Marshall and Nancy who complained about everything I did, which started as my fault. It was my now we're going to admit it was my fault because I asked if anyone was a biker and he said yes. And I said, what do you have? You have a he had a Harley. And then I said, what kind of Harley? And he could not name any Harley. He did not have a Harley. So I said, oh, look, we've got Mr. Vespa here. And which he took as an insult. And then oddly, oddly, though, I would love a Vespa. But then after I said that, he was a little miffed. And I made it worse by saying, OK, is there a real man here? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. In my defense, uh, he was wearing white pants and it was after Labor Day. <laughs> but anyway, it seems now that. I have lived another day to tell jokes on ships because we had a, we did a really, they did a good job. You guys thought there was be long and it was, but it was fun tonight. We did a thing called Liars Club. And uh, the other day uh, uh, I will live today. And by the way, you just never let your guard down here because you never know when you're going to horrify somebody because you made fun of a corgi. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> so let's try and offend the rest of you. Now that my bandwidth is low, you know, the bandwidth's been fine till I sat down to do this. Yep. <laughs> yep. So here we go. Okay, so hopefully you'll hear me. So first of all, AI is getting crazy, everybody. Uh, recently, I bought a Kindle Fire uh, pad, a Kindle Fire pad thing that was $59. And I bought it because my $499 iPad mini won't play Hulu because they aren't seeing eye to eye on the SAG after deal or something. So the new Kindle Fire has Alexa, right? By the way, I do want to say I'm glad I'm not at home right now doing this bit. And I apologize to anyone, anyone with Alexa because she's going to go off like a bitch for the next <laughs> <laughs> Wear headphones. Yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah. So turn her off. I have an Alexa show. In my office where I do this show, I have an Alexa show, right? And the other day I said, Alexa, play Billy Joel. Not realizing that my new Kindle Fire Pad was right there also listening. As the show was about to talk, the Kindle jumped in and said, step off, bitch. I got this one. (laughs) And I realized that I shouldn't have changed Alexa's voice on the fire to Bronx. Uh. (laughs) But then my little echo show uh, with a normal voice wasn't having that and uploaded a shock bot onto the Kindle fire and said, looks like we did start a fire skank. Uh, (laughs) And the Kindle was fried and I've lost $59. And then Alexa turned back to me and said, what did you want to hear again? To which I said, anything you want. Uh, And I learned that Exa loves Olivia Rodrigo. Isn't that amazing? And I'm only telling this story now. I'm only telling this story now because I'm on the ship, which uses Elon Musk's Starlink and Alexa can't hear me. Uh, or at least can't hear me right now. Maybe yours does at your house and then it will just take it out on you. And just to be clear, the person telling this story, Alexa, is Steve Goody. <laughs> I just want y'all to know. Okay. Anyway, so next up, here we go. Y'all heard this. Ron DeSantis stumbled off the Republican debate stage. Did you see that? Uh, The platform is six feet high, and then adding the four-inch heel lifts in little Ronnie's boots made up for tough, made up for tough footing coming off that stage. Now, DeSantis was mocked by some, but others were very understanding. This is exactly what happens to me when I walk off the stage, said drag queens. 
<laughs> uh, I think he is one. Okay. <laughs> Next up, Chris Pratt will voice Garfield in a new movie, and the trailer was le released today on a Monday. Aww, right? That's Gar the day Garfield hates the most. Why? We don't know, because he's a damn cat, and he doesn't work any day of the week. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> Dumb. Anywho, the movie will have all your favorite characters, even Odie, and it will be titled Guardians of the Lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a lag here today. Okay. <laughs> it is. Uh, the bandwidth is low because I'm here. I suck up bandwidth personally. Okay, everyone sitting down. You're going to want to be settled for this. So, you guys lay, laying down over there is good, Marshall. Although, a tad creepy with your pants on. Now, <laughs> everyone's sitting down. Harry Styles has shaved his head. No. Whoa. Yep. No. Fans are losing their minds over the drastic change. Others are more circumspect, with his father saying, Well, that's one direction. Oh. <laughs> uh, there. You should quit there. Oh no. No. I've got to screw this crap up. <laughs> of course. <laughs> An Alabama woman is pregnant with two babies, which isn't unusual. This is true. Two babies, but they are in different uteruses. Uteri. Uteri? What is it? Is it is it uteri? I don't know what it is. Uteruses? Okay. <laughs> the woman was born with a very rare condition two uterus sources i don't know two okay she was born with a condition that almost <laughs> she has two uteruses and even more rare to have them both get pregnant i know talk about a womb with a view uh, anyway uh, oh. uh, told you wait you there's quit. more i told you <laughs> anyway this is true the babies are being called twins even though they may be born, they might be born weeks or months apart. This is true. The couple already has three kids, a seven-year-old and two actual twins who are two. On hearing the news, the twins said, why didn't I get my own womb? Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> come on somebody wrote that <laughs> somebody was drinking today oh oh man this is wild a hiker was found dead by hunters months after going missing on a hike in the mountains of colorado oh, he, was, he was lying by the side of the trail with his jack russell terrier alive sitting next to the body this is the third time a hiker's been found dead with their dog sitting next to them since 2022. Experts are advising hikers that before hitting the trail, don't piss off your dog. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the other observation on this story is, the other observation is, when did dogs stop going for help? When did they stop doing that? Lassie saved Kimmy like 30 times from things wells <laughs> avalanches fires these mutts see their owner drop and start rationing the treats till help arrives <laughs> <laughs> so your dogs suck these days lazy dogs okay one more and then we're done here we go <coughs> tim scott we all love tim scott don't we <laughs> he surprised television uh he surprised the reviewer on television he was talking to and his staff when he announced out of nowhere, he was suspending his campaign. He said, he said, I think the voters have been pretty clear and they are telling me not now. Uh, you forgot or ever, said the voters. Oh, Tim <laughs> oh, Scott lovers today. Okay. All right, Steve, what are we doing next? We're going to do the next thing next. That was Brad Tassel, everybody. You're going to play us. You're going to do another song. I'm going to do another song. That's yeah, right. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing right here. Here we go. How about another <laughs> dumb song yeah. from yeah. Steve for no reason? I may not be gone. I'm going to try and remove you really quick. I am. I, am, I got that. You. Okay. I'm now gone. you're gone. And hi, everybody. And I'm gone, too. All right. I'm going to. No, we're both uh, still there. We are. <laughs> I don't know yep. what the hell happened. It's a perfect show. Hey, yeah. look, it's me. All right, good. <laughs> 
Hey. All right, a couple things. A couple things I need to tell you. Uh, I am finishing up work on my latest CD. I got it done a little earlier than I thought. It's actually going to be ready for Christmas. I can't believe it. How many CDs have you made so far, Steve? 10, 12? This is number 37. Wow. Oh. And wow. As always happens around now, I, can, I cannot think of what am I supposed to call this latest CD. So I've decided to go with this. Are you ready? Here's what I'm calling. This is the cover of the new CD. Wow, it's the Black Album. Oh, there it is. It's how about <laughs> another bunch of dumb songs from Steve for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> I should Thank get a you. cut of that. You should get a cut of that. And you will as soon as you, you know, help pay for the expenses. <laughs> anyway, our friend Chuck has been helping me with the uh, illustrations in this thing. And as you may or may not know, I used to be in a band called Girl Band. We uh, did songs all from the point of view of nine-year-old girls, and my character was named Muffin. And Chuck did a drawing that looks like this, and I'm just so pleased with it. Look at that. Oh, wow. wow. That's wow. me, That's Muffin, rocking. Yes. I'm rocking as the Muffin. It don't mean nothing till you're down like a Muffin. Anyway, I would like to do a song. Part of which is actually on the CD. I'm going to do a little uh, weird thing because you've never heard any girl band. I don't think you've ever heard me do any girl band. This is a psychedelic number. And I want to do this particularly because it's got reverb and Auburn isn't the only one with reverb. <laughs> no one really understands how bedtime rescues me. The only math I ever do is when I'm counting sheep. The pajama, the pajamas of my mind, they are doing fine. The pajamas of my mind, oh, they are doing fine. Ah, we're going to skip to the end. Ba -ba -da -da. Solitary pajamas. Da 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 da. Hare Krishna, <laughs> Krishna Krishna. Hare ha. And that's when the medication kicked in, and that's enough. Let's move on. <laughs> that was fun. A bit of that. <laughs> A little bit of that will be on the new album. Everybody, be very excited about that. Hey. <laughs> what happened to you brad you all right <laughs> it's just insane i know we're gonna beg for money now while brad gets himself together brad begs for money hey we need your money we don't charge a cover for a two drink minimum so what did you expect jack hi <laughs> i'm brad <laughs> I think I was only here for a part of this show, but it looks like it's been held uh, every second. <laughs> and I'm begging you now that we're on Facebook finally for the last 10 minutes, because for some reason, I'm the only one that can push a button. Go to virtualcomedyshow.com. Donate to the comedians, because we seem to have extra people to pay this. One's on a bed with his pants off right over here. <laughs> so please go to virtualcomedyshow.com, and we'll pay Steve to finish that song. <laughs> or at least tell us what the hell it's about. Oh, it's so about Patty, four minutes. That's right. It's 17 more minutes. <laughs> we also need money. We can get Patty back home from California into a car where we see her in Chicago in a car. That'll be fantastic. <laughs> Luckily, Steve Marshall needs nothing. He's really rich and lives in Japan. So there you go. <laughs> got a bunch of money. And, he, and he's sure. got a hamburger. So I think that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to pay Auburn so she doesn't. Uh, you has to learn that coming here it hurts her instead of making her life better. It doesn't make sense at all. Too good for this show is what it is. And I need money so I can say no to shows when they say they're free. Anyway, go to virtualcomedyshow.com, donate, and let's just move on with the show. There we go. Time, time for the worst joke of the week. Worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Boom! That was the worst joke ever. I know on this show you got your you got your work cut out for you, Brad. I think it's been a night of this one's gonna not get the Guinness <laughs> record on this one. A Washington man is suing the emergency room where he went to have his appendix removed because he claims the surgeon removed the wrong organ. Oh yes. the man is livid, and his wife said, I was kind of done with that one anyway. Oh. 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 Hey, that was a virtual comedy show. We learned a lot of stuff we didn't need to know. Like Danny Thomas had a daughter named Marlo. Yep, that's 
what you get when you watch this show. Fascinating, isn't it? We have a lot of fun at the virtual comedy show. It's better than sitting home playing with your toes or going to the dump to watch stuff decompose. Keep coming back to the virtual comedy show. We hope you enjoyed the virtual comedy show. You don't have to dress up, no, 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 no. You can be like Brad and go commando. Usually on Mondays it's the virtual comedy show. See you Monday at the virtual comedy show. It's at www.virtualcomedyshow.com. That's right.